Alright, so now we will be talking about the last topic for the introduction and uh, probably the most important because this is something that we will review every now and then and this is structural effects. So later on when we talk about the class, the separate parts or the sefer separate classes of organic compounds, I'll always ask, what do you see here? What structural effects are present in this functional group? Or what structural effects are present in this class of organic compounds? That's why it's this important. And structural effects are simply uh, effects or physical effects that happen in a compound and something that we can see even if we just look at their structure. All right? And uh, the purpose of this is to stabilize the molecule. You want to stabilize it because if not, then it would uh, react with everything. All right. So we have chemical bonds. We have the sigma and the pi bonds, remember. But we, have, we also have the inter intermolecular forces of attraction. But there are other things going on inside every compound. And that's what we will discuss now. The first that I would talk about is probably the most complex it would be a lot of it would consume a lot of time a lot of time a lot of time but we need to now electron delocalization simply put is um, a structural effect wherein electrons move about in a compound it does not stay in just one bond for example uh, I have a an uh, a bond here all right there is a way wherein this ch bond could move about anywhere and then everything would change even the double bond can go somewhere else and you, know, you know generally that way the electrons could uh, stabilize uh, the electrons could have a greater area to move instead of just being unstable at one place and so that would further stabilize the compound and we could actually subdivide this into several types depending on a certain uh, requirement because we have two requirements for electron delocalization first is of course an electron source if there is no electron source then there would be nothing to delocalize all right and then the second would be the site of movement if there is no place to move, then the electrons, even if they are present, they would not be able to move. So those are the two requirements. Well, we could classify the type of electron delocalization based on the electron source. So if the electron source is sigma, uh, is from a sigma bond, we call that sigma electron delocalization or its more common term is CH hyperconjugation why because usually the sigma bond comes from a C to H bond so for example I draw a simple hydrocarbon alright for example I draw propene no I'll just draw all the bonds I'll draw it in calculate Alright. First of all, we need to find the electron source. Alright. By the way, the site should be beside the electron source. Alright. So meaning, if this is the site, then the elect then the electron source should be this one. And why did I say that this is the site? The site should always be an sp2 carbon and uh, just to shorten the, the discussion uh, I, I would have explained why sp2 in the actual lecture uh, classes so anyway this is sp2 we have the site check beside it is a sigma bond a CH bond check so this can delocalize and how do we how does this happen well electron here moves here then this pi bond has nowhere to go because what happens is if this electron moves here this C would have three hydrogens 
the double bond would move the, to the other side. So what happens is actually, in summary, this this we know that the this one is the pi. One of these bonds are pi. You would see that the pi bond is just moving between carbon one and two, and two and three. So it's as if it's move it's it's here somewhere, but it's also here. It's moving. So that's CH hyperconjugation. If the source is let's put number one here. If the source is a pi electron, we say that this is a pi electron delocalization. But it has a common name and that is resonance. So the si the most used example is this one. This is benzene. How do we say that we have satisfied this? We have here, for example, let's use this carbon. The electron source, we have, we have an electron source here because this is a pi bond. We have a pi electron here. And beside this carbon, uh, whether it is this one or this one, this, these are both sp2 anyway, all right? Because this one has a pi bond, this one has a pi bond. So what happens? This one, this electrode can move to this side, and uh, you know it's it's just a, a series of movements. And at the end, what happens is it could actually look like this. So in uh, in actuality, it would look as if all these pi bonds are rotating around the ring. All right. Now. The third would be lone pair delocalization. It has no other name. So as the name says, the source is a lone pair. So for example, I have a nitrogen here and we know that the nitrogen has a lone pair. And then we have a, an sp2 carbon here. The lone pair could go to this side to this one and then a series of movements would allow this one to you know this is one possible this is one possible uh, result of lone pair delocalization again as I said electrons are moving all, all around the molecule but the point is the source is the, the, the source of movement is electrons from a lone pair